Okay, it's example six. We're dealing with rectilinear motion. I, I did one in example five, which explained a little bit about the, the theory of it. So we're just going to get straight into this. We've got two particles this time uh, colliding, a bit careless of them, or maybe it was planned, who knows. Uh, when the acceleration of each of them is the same, and we're told some information at the point of collision, the velocity of one is 120 meters per second, the velocity of the other is 140. Now we're trying to calculate the initial velocity of both particles, and again, all we know uh, is functions of acceleration. Um, so this time, we don't actually have any information about the time of collision, and that would be what we would be looking to do. Um, given the fact that we're trying to calculate the initial velocity of both particles, we're assuming that the particles did not start at rest, as the previous example did. So the clock started t equals zero when the particles were already moving. They had a particular velocity and acceleration. So we're not going to be able to assume that when t equals zero, the velocity equals zero. Okay. Um, so let's have a look at uh, what we can do. We know that the accelerations uh, are the same at the point of contact, and we have two functions. We know that if the acceleration at A was 8t, um, we can say that the collision happens when the acceleration of A is equal to the acceleration of B at E. The acceleration of A equals the acceleration of B. And just solving that simple equation, tells us that the collision happened when t equals 5 seconds. That gives us some useful information. The collision happened at 5 seconds, but we were looking for the initial velocity. We know that the velocity is at the point of collision. So let's have a look at particle A. We know that the acceleration uh, at the point of contact was uh, what's given us, first of all, ht. Uh, and we're looking for its velocity function. Uh, again, we've got displacement, velocity, acceleration. That's the derivative. And that's your um, integration. And we want, again, from, to get from acceleration to velocity. So we need to integrate. We need to integrate ht with respect to t to get a function of velocity, which gives us 4t squared plus c. And again, we've got a general uh, function here, but we need uh, some const some we need some other information if we want to work out that constant. Um, what do we know? Well, we don't know the initial conditions, but we do know that at the collision, at five seconds the velocity of A was 120, 120 meters uh, per second. So we can substitute that in. Um, and we end up seeing that C has a value 20. In other words, our velocity function is going to be 4t squared plus 20. And we're actually looking for the initial velocity, t equals zero. So we're looking for substituting zero in. And you'll see that we get just the number 20. So the initial velocity at t equals zero for particle A is 20 meters per second. And we can apply the same principle for particle B. I'll just keep it up here. Particle B, the acceleration is 5t plus 15. Let's just use that version. 5t plus 15. Again, we're going to integrate to get its velocity function with respect to t. So that's 5t squared over 2 plus 15t plus c. This time at t equals 0. The velocity is 140, I do believe. 
just check that 140 so we can say here that 140 is well, that's going to be zero and that's 15t is going to be zero which means that uh oh in fact it's not t equals zero is it you're already shouting at me that's not t equals zero t equals five at v equals 140 so we'll substitute them in 140 is equal to 5 times 5 squared over 2 plus 15 times 5 plus c. A wee bit more working out required here. 25 is 125 over 2 plus 75 plus c. 125 divided by 262 and a half plus 75 is 137 and a half which means that C is a value two and a half or five over two, i.e. our velocity function is five T squared over two plus 15 T plus five over two. We want to work out the value of the velocity for particle B when T equals zero So we substitute zero in. This time that's going to be zero. And that's going to be zero. And there. And so we end up with the velocity. Now when time is zero, it's five over two uh, meters per second for particle B. And we could finish that off by saying um, initial velocities. Particle A, 20 meters per second, and particle B, 2.5 or 5 over 2 meters per second. And there we go. Uh, again, uh, we're doing some integration, but this time we've got uh, different values to substitute in. Uh, it's not just zeros all the way. Um, and also, initially, we had to do a little bit of uh, puzzling out what the actual time of collision was. Okay, so rectilinear motion, a combination of differentiation and integration, and I hope that you can go in and solve some of the problems uh, in this area.